Hello and welcome everyone. This is John Person reporting for the Bottom Line Commodity Report. It is Sunday, November 11th. Uh, tomorrow we have, on Monday that is, we have on the 12th an observance of Veterans Day and we want to hear it. Uh, National Futures and all our affiliates, including Trading Triggers University and PA Stock Alerts, want to wish all our veterans um, and for those who served our country in war or in peace, a thank you. Um, I myself come from a, a military family, and uh, both my father and grandfather were uh, in the service, but um, I know what it's like for uh, not just uh, servicemen to give up their uh, time in the, the military, but also for families who are missing their loved ones. So we want to give our heartfelt thanks and, and reach out to everyone. And also in Canada, don't forget, we have uh, Remembrance Day. So um, again, all our thanks. In the markets last week, we have a new president-elect, um, or not new president-elect, but uh, President Obama was re-elected for four more years. Uh, the market initially uh, um, rallied and uh, as you can see the market did not like the outcome of that election um, what does the health and the breadth of the market look like well we've been uh, trading below as you can see this uh, level here is the advanced decline on the s&p and we broke below the moving average levels of course it has been chopping around for quite some time through this summer um, but we've decidedly broken below the last swing uh, or low that was created in the early part of august so if we take a look at August, the week ending August 3rd, you'll see if I draw this horizontal line right here, this was the close and this is where the last uh, level to, uh, as you can see with a, uh, as I'm pointing here, uh, this low on the advanced decline was corresponding with this price close for that week. We are now closed below that level of August 3rd. And as you can see in the advanced decline, we've now seen more stocks go down in association with this price decline. So uh, back in price and in uh, breadth measurements, the market has weakened significantly. Even though, as you can see, we are at the person's monthly predicted pivot support, when we take a look at this price decline, not only is it uh, being um, supported by stocks going down in accordance to the overall index, so it's not just one or two companies like Apple or cap-weighted stocks that are helping to drag down the, the, the index, it's a, a majority of stocks are now starting to see tell signs of weakness. Unfortunately, I don't have good news because it is also uh, accumulated the decline on a pickup in volume. So just two short weeks we had a potential doji here which typically dojis mark uh, indecision and can stall price advances as well as price declines as it is this week um, that doji was indecision and now the market participants have returned in full force as you can see we did get a sell-off on significant volume so when we take a look at just the s&p 500 it looks and appears as if we're going to continue the trend lower based on the breadth and volume analysis. The only upside is that we are coming into some type of support in volume levels, which we have uh, just digging into, number one. Uh, but I believe that any rallies will be short-lived as we get back into uh, possibly unless we close above this monthly pivot area which is around 1420 up to the highs of last week which is 1430 so we're going to mark that in our sand uh, as a line in the sand on our chart so we can call that uh, a close back above these levels uh, we want to call it these highs right there so it's 1432 weekly closes over 1432 and we're back to the races in the bull trend until then i think rallies will be sold against weekly resistance so let's take a look at our our weekly numbers and you'll see that going into next week i think any rallies up into say uh 14 10 to 14 17 in that area will be met with some uh resistance in the marketplace 
Now on a week, on a daily chart, we did form a doji, and that's what I want to also address. So that's why I say I don't think we're going to go straight down, and unless we get an, an immediate reversal and get back above this 1432 level, and I'm going to keep that line in the sand on the charts here for us, but until we get back above that level um, on a closing basis, I think traders are going to be selling the rallies because on the higher degree time frame, it's still looking pretty bearish. So let's take a look at the financials. Uh, we've been looking at knob spreads or the reverse, which is the notes over bonds or the bonds over the notes. So if we're bearish, the financials were bullish equities. When the equities go down, people buy bonds in response to flight to safety. There's a couple little things that are bringing to the table that makes the um, are we all bearish right now kind of uh, painting the doomsday picture. It's a pretty cloudy because here's why notice that while the knob spread has just broken out to its peak high from August so we've just gone up to the knob spread meaning notes and bonds bonds outperforming notes to the upside we are looking at establishing a short position if we ever see a break below again this 14 level that's our tell but as you can see the market's coming back up into this this channel resistance from a seasonal perspective bonds peak out towards the end of November when we take a look at the knob spread, it's towards its highs. But when we look at the relationship of bonds, it's not quite at its highs, and the notes are certainly not at its highs. So while the bond uh, spread over notes has broken to a newer high, as I can share with you here by a tick or so, um, you know, it, when we look at something like this, we got to say, is there going to be any follow through? Just because we have a one week run up does not mean that we can't see like this a one week run up followed by the next week down so you know until we get the knob spread closing multiple times over this uh, high it's not going to tell me that this is the the time to be selling equities and buying uh, into financials right now I, I'm looking at this as a potential turn and I'm going to share with you the next uh, or at least a potential top in the market from a seasonal perspective in financials and that's why I'm not saying that you know, I'm not all that negative in equities white right yet. Um, and I'm going to show this next chart might, might help clear that up. All right, so this looks a little confusing, but here's what you're looking at. All right, in black, we have the Dow Jones Transportation Index. In black and at the very bottom, DJTA, Dow Jones Transportation Average. You have here the S&P 500. Over here in black, the chart that you have is the Dow Jones Utility, DJUA, Utility Index. So utilities, and then in fuchsia or purple, we have treasury bonds. In green, we have the 10-year notes. So as you can see, you, you, you can tell that the price relationship is very closely mirrored between the green and also the fuchsia and that's the bonds and then the tenure notes but in addition to that you also see a lot of trend consideration that's very uh, I would say mirrors and very tightly close-knit with treasuries and utility stocks the, f the funny thing is is last week bonds rallied and utilities got decimated now this is a monthly chart so let's take a look at a weekly chart now you can see what I'm kind of talking about that typically utilities and bonds trade in tandem look at that relationship it's almost trending the same way except for right now right now look at this bonds I gotta bring this in here so you can see what I'm talking about bonds and notes rallied and utilities got smoked I mean we just took in one week the life out of the utility index well looking at the S&P's from a relative performance standard S&P's held up relatively better than the utility sector and looking at the Dow Jones transportation average it really hasn't moved up or down it's just kind of in a sideways channel so to speak since the whole summer began so when I say that I don't if if utility stocks are a safe haven, if you get into utilities for a dividend yield, if you're into utilities for flight to safety, um, then typically you're not going to see that sector go down. If you're getting out of utilities, and it can be a harbinger or at least a warning, or at times in the past when the utility sector went down, it, it was a precursor or led to sales in treasuries. So I'm going to keep my eye on this 
very closely because typically when the utility goes down you'll lead the way for um, the treasury markets to go down so if the treasury markets start to go down guess what that means stocks aren't going to go down and so we want to keep our eye on this relationship very carefully in the next week two weeks ahead and I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the fact that seasonally speaking bonds go down towards the end of November um, I'm gonna take this utility decline as a uh, quite the warning so as you can see from a utility standpoint this is where we were and we've just in the last week this is a daily chart now just absolutely decimated the utility sector and in the last three days since the election I mean so the the utilities were starting to go down a little bit earlier uh, the stock market started to go down but last three days the utility space really got nailed uh, transportation really you know we just back to where we were so I'm gonna have to say this this little diversion a uh, uh, divergence excuse me of bonds rallying and utilities going down to me uh, it, it it's more of a precursor that perhaps it's going to lead the way for bonds to move lower so i'm going to go with the seasonal aspect here and remain on the bearish side of bonds as we hit the top of this channel and i'll keep you abreast of this this condition moving forward all right so now let's take a look at some positive news in, in as far as we look at uh, in in commodities um i see that after the usda crop production report we have a buy signal for the week wheat this is a wheat market Wheat's been in a tremendous run. It had this strong trend. It moved sideways. But this time around, unlike this last buy signal, which means it's been in a range, it's been in a, in a, in a sideways range for quite some time, as you can see here. Um, when I say quite some time, I mean from July. But typically, we see bottoms going into mid-November. That last going into, as I can extract this out a little bit further, going into like mid January and almost peaks out into February so we have a nice little strong run that might run prices back up into the you know at least test this upper boundary of nine dollars or maybe a little bit higher the reason I'm, I'm bringing this to your attention is because as we see a seasonal strength and we had a high closed doji on a weekly basis followed by an indicator buy signal but look at the volume this is the on balance volume indicator and someone's been buying wheat up in just a small little move here we got a tremendous build up in on balance volume indicator so i'd have to say that at this point in time we might be looking at long wheat positions now when we take a look at um the uh, seasonality of it typically we see a little bit of weakness coming into um, November, early November, and so that's right in here. Early November, you get that weakness, and then you get a small little spurt to the upside. I don't think that it's going to amount to a whole lot because the whole entire grain complex is a little bit weak right now, especially soybeans after the USD crop production report. So typically the soybeans bottom out typically corn begins its seasonally strong period after the harvest lows but I think that day traders or not day traders but swing traders can certainly take a look at the play off that weekly high close doji we actually had a daily high close doji here and the market uh, had rebound so I think that any pullbacks going into like the 865 area I wouldn't expect a whole lot to the upside but I think you can safely look at buying uh, pullbacks in the wheat market especially as we get into uh, early this week you start that seasonal trend to the upside so we're in a, a, a system generated weekly buy mode and a daily buy mode so pullbacks might be supported between say 870 and 866 area I think you got to play the stops underneath this last swing low which is 836 so perhaps if you're if you are looking at commodities the wheat might be a play for short-term swing trades number one as and number two look for uh, a play on the long side going it, on these pullbacks against that sideways channel uh, as you can see that we've uh, established for you right in here so I think uh, going with an indicator buy because we had such strong volume is a, a neat thing now let's talk about one other market all right, so this is a stock. It's called JDS Uniface. And what's interesting is last week, while the end of the stock market was going, the you know, the people were fearing, fearing you know, four more years of the same gridlock in Washington, nothing's going to happen, the fiscal cliff, et cetera, et cetera. And it's the, you know, the economy's co going to completely crack. Um, 
the JDS unit phase generated a weekly high close doji and we had a little uptick on volume. The neat thing about that is it occurred as we should because it's in a time frame where you start to see this particular name in in that space enter a seasonally strong period of time. So stock traders may want to look at a low risk, uh, look for a pullback, maybe like the 1070 area, stops go underneath 932. That might be a little too much risk to uh, anyone's portfolio. But I think any significant pullback going into the next uh, couple days, uh, even looking at the daily charts, look at the daily chart here real quick with me together. You'll notice that this little move, this little price action here, popped on some some decent volume so we're in daily buy mode now we're also corresponding with a weekly indicator buy signal and some of these buy signals work pretty well as you can see um, but we have a high close doji and it was on some decent volume so volume over here we broke out a little bit I think uh, a slight small pullback that low must have been just a little bit of uh, capitulation from longs that bought up in here but I think you can see some strength I also like the chart pattern a little double bottom with a higher right side so the W bottom formation this forms the uh, first wave second wave third wave and then as this market starts to accelerate if you take out the first objective will be 1342 next objective will be the high at 1496 uh, round up say fifteen dollars and again if you are in this type of range you're buying from a seasonal perspective the time that you should be buying it as you can see look at the seasonal trend it lasts going into April so JDS Uniphase might be a time now to pick up a small stock position going forward into this the rest of this year just one little observation of one company name that generated a uh, a stock buy signal in a seasonally strong period of time with a proprietary pattern of our high closed OG so there you have uh, that concludes our uh, report remember Monday is kind of a quasi holiday um, as we get into um, uh, the Veterans Day holiday banks are closed I, I did want to just bring one more market to us we are still looking at this uh, uh, cattle trade in uh, still working orders as you can see in the spread between the December and the April uh, we're still looking for this to firm up but it, as you can tell we've made lower lows and lower highs and we're still got our orders working to buy right back in case we get into this zone right in here so that's uh, we got that still on the radar screens moving forward so just thought I'd let you know, bull trend alive uh, in cattle. We're just not going to chase this spread. We're going to be looking for a pullback because beef sales, are, as you know, we have a holiday coming up that not a lot of people eat beef for that one week, Thanksgiving, uh, you know, a lot of leftover turkey. So there you have it, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the uh, information and you find it useful. And I will update as the market conditions uh, mandate. Thank you. I hope you had a great weekend.